Hello everyone, I'm Attica Spot. I'm a student helping out Mr. McComb with the uh, aircraft design challenge in Android Airspace this year, and in this series of videos I'm going to kind of give you a sort of brief tutorial on how to do basic things in Plane Maker, and by the end you should be able to create a simple aircraft of your own, and at the very least uh, be able to modify existing aircraft. Um, so in this video we're going to kind of go over how the X-Plane system folder is laid out. We're going to go over kind of what you should do to organize your files in that folder. And we'll talk about kind of the basic PlaneMaker interface, uh, how to open and save aircraft, some of the tabs in PlaneMaker, how to manipulate the view in PlaneMaker, and kind of some other best practices that I found to work really well when you're working with X-Plane. So the first thing you'll want to do is you want to find your X-Plane system folder. Now for me this is under desktop in a folder that I've named X-Plane 9 and then in another folder called X-Plane Fly to Learn. For most of you it'll be in your C drive under program files x86 and then at the very bottom of that you should find X-Plane 9. If it's not there then it's probably in a folder called X-Plane Fly to Learn somewhere and you'll have to probably find that yourself. So once you've gotten there you'll see this kind of layout of folders and files. Now mine's a bit cluttered because I mess around with Xplane a lot and I end up with a whole bunch of files from projects and screenshots and whatnot. But you should have these folders here and then you should have a program called Plane Maker and a program called Xplane Maker and then some text files that you might run into later. So the first thing you'll want to do when you're making an aircraft in Plane Maker is to give it a folder to save it in. So um, X-Plane is kind of nice because it doesn't really care where you save things as long as it's in the X-Plane system folder, but for the sake of organization, why don't you just make a folder in your aircraft directory that's called maybe uh, My Designs. And then in that folder, just make another one for whatever the name of the aircraft you're going to be making is. So let's say uh, my first aircraft. Alright, so now that you've made that folder, you can head back to the Xplane system folder. So now there are two apps that you'll want to concern yourself with here. The first is Plane Maker, and then we have Xplane. So the Xplane app launches the simulation itself. Now if you're just making a plane, you'll obviously want to launch Plane Maker. So Let's go ahead and do that. And when most of you first open Plane Maker, you'll see this view of this kind of cylinder looking thing. Now this is the this is the new file, this is the blank ACF file. And so the first thing you'll want to do is save this as whatever aircraft you want, whatever you want your aircraft to be called. And so when you go to save, you'll see that you get kind of this overview of the X system folder. And so you just navigate to wherever you want to save your aircraft. So we said my designs and then my first aircraft. And then I'll name this uh, my plane. And now X plane saves its files for aircraft as Dot .acfs, and these are proprietary to explain. You can only open them and edit them with Plane Maker. That's what they're called. And you can't just double click on an ACF file and open it up in Plane Maker. You have to open up Plane Maker first, and then you find your ACF files from that program. And so now I've got this error message, which I'll explain later, but we don't need to worry about that now. So now we've got our first ACF file saved in our aircraft's folder. So, let's say you wanted to open another aircraft that's not yours. So, again, you go to File, except this time, say Open. And then you can use this menu here at the top to navigate back a, a layer in the file system. So, if we wanted to find, um, let's say, the 777 in X-Plane, you'd go up to Aircraft. And then that would be under uh, Heavy Metal. And then... 777-200, and then, so to open an aircraft, you double-click on the ACF file here. 
now you can see we have an aircraft open in PlaneMaker. So, one thing you'll notice is that you can't manipulate your view in PlaneMaker by clicking. You can't do it by right clicking or middle clicking. None of that works. So, to manipulate your view, you use the W, A, S, and D keys and the arrow keys. So, the W key rotates your plane around its longitudinal axis like it's rolling. S does the opposite. And then A will change your heading, and D will do the opposite. So, you can see that I can fairly easily rotate my plane around. If you hold down the keys for a while, it speeds up the rotation speed, um, which may be useful. So, another thing to note about changing your views is that if you go up to the top here and you click the background tab, you'll see these five options. So, if you press top, you'll have a top view of your aircraft, bottom, bottom view obviously, side, front, and back. And this is useful when you've kind of gotten yourself into a funny position with the arrow keys. You can just kind of easily go back to uh, a centered view. So now for the arrow keys, if you just press down on the arrow keys, which I am doing right now, and you notice that the plane is moving, although it's not moving a lot. So what I usually do, unless I'm super zoomed in on a small detail that I want to adjust, if you hold down the shift key, and use the arrow keys, you can move your aircraft around pretty quickly. And so now you'll see that it's not quite centered. And so that's what you do with those. Last thing you want to do is be aware of the zoom in and out function. So you can press the equals key and the minus key to zoom in and out. But, as you may notice, these are a bit slow, so if you hold shift and press those same keys, it's much faster. Now, this doesn't work for the WASD keys, they just rotate at the same pace until they start speeding up after you've held them down for a while. Um, so, just be aware of that. Now, the next thing you'll notice here is that we have a whole bunch of tabs up top. So, we have About, File, Standard, Expert, Background, and Special. Now the About tab, we don't really need to worry about that much. The File tab is obviously where we save and open all of our aircraft. Now you can create your entire aircraft only using functions found under the Standard tab. So this is where you kind of model the basic shape of your aircraft. This is where you create your wings, engines, all the basic features. Now the Expert tab has some more advanced stuff. Most of you won't need to do anything here, but it may be useful to know how to change your airfoils, which you do here. Background adjusts your view, and you get a few more additional functions like the 3D quick mode, so this kind of just rotates your plane around. Um, you can do it quickly, or it does it for a few more times around the circle. Then the special tab, um, there are a few things in here that we'll talk about a bit later that are useful. Um, but most of the stuff you won't really need just to create a basic aircraft, except for the still or moving controls button. So this, if you click it, suddenly your aircraft's controls switch from either moving to still or from still to moving. See that again. And then if you press the space key, you get a wireframe view of your aircraft. Now this is really, really useful for positioning parts that don't initially show up as visible bodies like your engines before you give them an cell, or your center of gravity, or the viewpoints you might have. And that's about it for the tabs. Um, we'll talk about each function in here that you'll need to use in more detail. In later videos I'll go into some of the functions in the expert tab that you might not really need if you're just modifying an aircraft, but you will definitely need if you're building a fighter or something. And yeah, that's about that. So, the next big important concept you need to understand for working in PlaneMaker is that PlaneMaker functions on a set of three axes. And so what this means is, so if you if you open up, let's say, your engine specs on a plane that you already have open, and you go over to the location tab, just as an example, you can see, and you'll see this all over PlaneMaker, you have the long arm, lat arm, and vert arm. So, 
These axes, or arms, as PlayMaker calls them, are how things are positioned along your ACF file. So, long arm refers to the position of something along your longitudinal axis, which is the axis of your aircraft that runs from the nose all the way back to the tail in a straight line. Uh, some people refer to this as the aircraft datum line, some people will refer to this as the bore site, especially in the military. But that's what that is. So this is the position of your aircraft, uh, your aircraft's parts on the longitudinal axis right here. So imaginary line running from the nose all the way back to the tail. Um, so stability of an aircraft is usually referred to as longitudinal stability, just because it refers to the stability of the aircraft as it rotates, uh, as this axis rotates, basically. And it's an important one to know. So the other two, lateral and vertical, so lat and vert, are basically just the other two axes of a three-dimensional coordinate system. So the lateral arm is an axis that runs from, let's say, one wingtip to another. It's just this horizontal axis. So you can think of your, your uh, lateral, or sorry, you can think of your longitudinal axis as the x-axis. You can think of this as maybe your z-axis, and then last, you have your vertical axis, which is obviously a vertical line that runs straight through from top to bottom of your aircraft. Um, so your lift vector is a vector that usually aligns with the vertical axis of your aircraft. And now, this is a really, really important part of Plane Maker that you really absolutely must understand if you're going to be successful and making your own aircraft because basically everything that you create in plane maker is positioned according to these three axes and once you get the hang of understanding how they work it's fairly simple um, but if you don't know what they are and what they do then you're gonna not have a good time and I think that's about it as far as basic interface stuff goes. Um, if you want to make a new aircraft for whatever reason, you can just go to new and then you would ignore those error messages there. And yeah, so that's the basic interface of Plane Maker. So now let's go back to our first aircraft. So I'm going to go to aircraft, I'm going to go to my designs, that folder I created into that aircraft folder. I'm going to open that ACF. Now, you'll notice that when I saved it for the first time, I got an error message saying, I think, uh, this aircraft does not have a VNE. So, there are a couple things you want to do, just kind of as preliminary stuff, before you start working on your aircraft so you can save it without getting all sorts of error messages. And the first thing you'll want to do is you want to go to standard and then viewpoint and then so the, the main error message you're gonna get is this aircraft has a VNE of zero something 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 it'll overstress just by sitting there um, so that refers to the never exceed speed of your aircraft which is the value that determines it's kind of like the maximum design airspeed limit um, any faster in a plane than VNE and you'll probably break something so to avoid that error message you want to go to standard viewpoint and then over here you have what's called your V speeds. These are important reference speeds for your aircraft when you're flying and you'll just want to set a VNE for about what you think will be reasonable for your aircraft. So as a kind of rule of thumb I usually say I take my estimated cruise speed of the aircraft and then I add maybe let's say 50%. Um, that may be a bit much but that's just what I do. So if I'm making a small general aviation aircraft that maybe cruises at 100 knots, I'll say 150 something, that seems about reasonable. And if you're making a fighter, um, if you just keep on clicking up here, you can max it out to 999 knots. And now, when you see if I press Control S to save again, now I've got a different error message. So this says, you have entered an empty weight of zero. This defies the immutable laws of physics, yada, yada, yada. So the next thing you'll need to do is you want to kind of, you want to give yourself 
a few weights here, just so X-Plane knows that you're not trying to break physics. So you'll want to set yourself an empty weight and a maximum weight. For now, these aren't really super important. Maybe just say a thousand for each until you figure out more about what your aircraft's going to do. And now, pressing Control S again, no error messages. So this means I can make changes, I can save them without having to click that un annoying error message away each time. And now, you're basically all set to start working on your aircraft. And unless I'm forgetting something very obvious, that should be about it. Yeah, I think that'll do it for this video. So I um, hope you found this helpful. Next time we'll talk about how to make your fuselage and uh, kind of what that entails. So yeah, good luck with making your aircraft and I'll see you next time.